to tell us about how interactive 3D mascots and holographic characters uh, are evolving. Uh, Laurent uh, Abicassis, uh, and, uh, who is an Emmy Award winner, by the way, and Elodie Laurent Martin. Hi. Hello, everyone. So today we're here to talk to you about interactive characters and brand mascots. Um, so, uh, just to start off a little bit, we're from New Web, we're creating interactive characters. So what we're doing is we're animating the characters, 3D characters, in real time. So we're doing live animation to really build interactivity between the audience and the character. So um, we identified a few problems with brand mascot in general, but we really focused on two of them. Uh, adapting to a changing media landscape, because, you know, mascots are really physical, and brand awareness. And, and that's the whole thing, is that how do you adapt, right? Um, do you follow the trend or do you build the trend? Um, what's the future holding for your brands, you know? How do you use the new medias? So that's what we want to talk about, uh, how to position your brand in the evolving landscape, virtual reality, augmented reality, and the new media that are out there. What are the ways to get your brand awareness? And we, we are on the character side of things, so we will be talking really about how to put a character, your brand mascot, into such a context, in Facebook, in YouTube, on Twitter. With all of this content that's really online and so many new content every week, every day, how can you position your brand into this vast ocean of content? So uh, one of the, well, first of all, mascots. Why mascots? Low cost, the ageless, total control on the message. It's something uh, that's really used um, for branding, like for generations. Uh, we got mascots for kids, we got mascots for adults, for brands, for sports, a lot of mascots everywhere. Um, most of them are really popular and got into the pop culture actually and really got really popular um, uh, elsewhere than just on the brands. So mascots like uh, Monopoly as an example, uh, we can remember the name, we can remember the benefit, we can remember the product, uh, the target audience also, the relationship uh, we got with this game. But how can you build the relationship a step further? This is what we're working on. So just a quick question like that. Who has had an interaction with a mascot? Yeah, obviously. Now, who has had an interaction with a virtual mascot? Oh, yeah. I'm surprised. Ooh. Well, they did too. It's really surprising to see you at a, at a conference on creativity. Well, actually, I'm, I'm thinking of getting into e-pranks, catfishing. I mean, I'm not going to be 10 forever, you know. Mark, you can't do that. Haven't you read your T's and C's? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I read them all. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> Now, your father, Homer, appeared on live TV via Adobe Character Animator software. Do you remember that? Well, yeah, but I heard the reason you invented it was because my dad was too fat for the green screen. <laughs> Do you actually use Adobe products yourself? Well, sure, of course. I live in a... I'm just going to stop there because we've got a lot to show. But yeah, this is one of the examples um, that we can do for mascots. Um, uh, I'll, I'll just go further a bit here. Uh, what you've just seen with Bart Simpson well, was a presentation that was done at the Adobe, Adobe Max House? conference where the audience had the opportunity to talk with Bart Simpson. Now, we, we did not do that, um, but this is really along the line of what we're talking about, which is the ability to create interaction with the audience. Now, a couple years ago, animating a Bart Simpson doing one minute would have taken months on a team of 20, 30 people. Uh, but that evening, at that trade show, in live interaction was created with the audience. Um, and, and that's what we believe is really the future of, of the various brands, right? So having your characters, your brand, talking directly to your audience. So the so solution for uh, physical mascots would be to actually digitalize uh, into 3D mascots to be able to engage with the, the audience and to really build a relationship with them. So um, we're going to show you a little bit of the project that's going on in the world. So uh, in, in these four examples, those are the four leading examples at the moment of these type of interaction. 
Um, you, you can see there is the Atsune Miku character, who is from Japan. She's doing live shows. There is concert, filling stadium. She was in Toronto back in May, had a full concert, sold out. Uh, Bjork has recently released her avatar and a virtual reality project. Barbie is now a blogger on YouTube and talking directly to her audience. Uh, she has millions of views. And, and as we discuss, the Simpsons now are also using this type of technologies where they can be animated in a very fast production pace. Absolutely. So um, at the web, we built really a production pipeline allowing us to do interactivity between the characters and the brand. So we got some par partners helping us with that. Uh, we got Musion Canada that's really on the holographic side because after you animate the character, you can project it in hologram or into a screen. It doesn't change anything. But for really the wowness that we're looking for, hologram is ex it's the next thing, you know. So we're working closely with Musion to do that and also with uh, Diomatic. Um, to do the plugins and softwares. So th th these two companies, Musion is behind all the holographic screen you might have seen. So if you have seen some projects involving Michael Jackson in hologram or Tupac Shapur or Gorillaz, all these projects use the holographic screen from Musion, which we do. And then on top of this, we have built a custom solution and technologies to allow us to do this but not with live person, because when it was Michael Jackson, it's a, it's a live person, even though he was dead in, in that case. It, it's still a human being. What we are into is into characters. How can we bring characters, whatever their style, but animated personas to life? Mm -hmm. And Diomatic uh, really doing softwares. And the technology. So to that. Yeah. So um, at Nuweb, we really believe that uh, you should let your mascot do the talking. <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to help the relationship, but also, as we said, the brand awareness and to really get into the, the new, new now. You know, today it's different. You cannot just arrive with your physical mascot there at the game. It's not going to do anything. We're just so used to see that. So how to make it more special? How to take it into the digital world? Interactive characters. Um, yeah, so we're using a lot of uh, motion capture. Actually, everything is done through motion capture, and this is the way we position ourselves in the storytelling, and this is how we do, uh, how we can make it happen. It's really through, through an actor that's going to lead and he's going to do everything for the character. And to go further, instead of just using one, one single motion capture system, what we have developed is a unique combination of puppeteering techniques. So behind the scene, we really have digital puppeteers we have a complete team um, can go as high as 10 people working all together and moving in synchronicity to get the performance of that virtual character. Sometimes uh, one person might do the face, another the hands. Sometimes we are multiple person uh, animating joystick and gamepad to actually control the characters. Uh, what you're seeing in the current screen is one of the presentation we did uh, a couple months ago. And you will be able to see it live upstairs uh, afterwards if, if, if you want to experience that. And meet the character. Yeah. Um, a few months ago, a few years ago, I'd say, we started working on a holographic pop star. So we talked earlier about Hatsune Miku, who's making this huge hit all over Asia. She's touring the world, she's a, and she's a hologram. She's not even real. So we decided, hmm, how could we make this but interactive. How can this holographic pop star can interact on stage with dancers, with hosts, with the audience? How can she see, oh, I love your glasses. Oh, you got a nice shirt today. How can we do that? So we built this pipeline working on this, and we arrived at this. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what we've been working on.
what you've seen was all done live. This is not the compositing or rendering. It's all computed live. So it's all happening. And every time we do a show, it's a different show. We don't do it twice the same, right? It's exactly. Every time it's a bit different. Exactly. So that's it for us. If you guys have questions. Thank you for listening. Thank you. <laughs>